police major here. He told me he hasn't had a chance to listen to the 911 call surrounding this incident, but he says 911 usually urges callers to stay put and let police arrive to handle the situation. The victim's wife says Hannah Payne should have done that that night. You have no bond set at this time. 21-year-old Hannah Payne had a pain to look on her face when she heard she faces a murder charge. That's after police say she noticed 62-year-old Kenneth Herring hit a car and leave the scene Tuesday evening. Officers say Payne caught up with Herring at Riverdale Road and Forest Parkway and blocked him in with her car. It just seems like it's an unfortunate situation of a good Samaritan trying to stop person on a hit and run. Payne's attorney says she went to Herring's car with her gun to keep him from leaving again. Police don't see it completely that way. An altercation then ensued between the two of them, and during the altercation, Mr. Herring was shot and killed. Nicole Jackson says she saw Payne fighting with Herring, telling him to get out of his car. All of a sudden you hear a pow! And she got on her phone immediately and was like, he pulled the trigger. Police say Payne had called 911 before the shooting. Herring's estranged wife says Payne should have waited for officers. Why would you get out the car until the police came? That would have been logical. If they told you to stay in the car, why would you get out? I mean, you wouldn't in no danger if you got out of your car to go to his car. Herring says Payne is a danger to the community. I think she needs to go to jail because you committed murder. You need to go to jail. Yo, YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? Trey back again. Did you with a video? Now, this video right here comes out of GA, yes, Georgia, the great state of Georgia. Big shout out to everybody in Georgia, everybody in Albany, everybody in Macon. You know I love Macon, Georgia. Everybody in Savannah, everybody in ATL, everybody all over the great state of Georgia, and all my people in Augusta also. Show your boy love. Anyway, we have a tragic situation. We have a woman who wanted to be a hero. And like that old song, I think it's Tina Turner's song. If I'm wrong, just tell me if I'm wrong. Y'all be telling me if I'm wrong on the song anyway. Uh, we don't need another hero. And we have too many damn heroes. But when it's time to be a hero, don't nobody want to be a hero. Now, the story goes like this, that you have a woman uh, who allegedly seen a car accident and she chases a guy in her Jeep, blocks him in at an intersection, gets out with her gun with a, uh, a vest on. I, I guess it was a, a vest that had bad girl on. And had a scuffle with this guy and basically shot him because he wouldn't return back to the scene of the alleged crime that took place when he accidentally bumped somebody. Well, it was an accident on purpose or not. But the key point is this right here. This woman is not a, pol a police officer. She is not a constable. She is not a police officer. She's not a marshal. She's not anything like that. One thing she does have is she's licensed to carry, but you're not licensed to follow somebody and Block them in and pull them over and draw down on them. You cannot do that. And you might say, well, Trey, there is a such thing as vigilante justice. Yes, there is. But this is not the case to be a vigilante also. Now, all this could have been easily avoided if she would have just called the police, give the police the license plate number, describe the vehicle he was in, which looked like a, uh, a Dodge Dakota SLT, and let the police do their job. But this is what happens when people want to play hero. We have people that love to do that. Let me give you a little story real quick. Now, you know, at Home Depot, they got uh, something I went through when you have people trying to go over and above and beyond. You know what I'm saying? Certain types of people. So I pull up in Home Depot with my Camaro, and basically I'm just running there to get a little package and run right back out. So I'm in a loader zone, but nobody's there. I'm pulled way over to the side. Matter of fact, I pulled further over. Now, you had a guy who had just pulled up in some uh some worker type truck. He, he was getting some logs or whatever. Now, he had plenty of room. I could open my door because, you know, two-door cars, uh, the door when you open it is wider. It's in a four-door car. They make them longer. Of course, you can look. So I opened my car. I got plenty of room to get out, plenty of room. But as I come back to my car, which I wasn't even in there but about a minute or two, I only had this much room. He pulled his truck all the way over into my car, though, and had this much his tire. You know how people turn their tires out? About that far from my car, though, why can't even get in my car? And I asked this man, why would you do that? And I was about to go off until, you know, I had to calm myself down. Cause I was really about to set it off and everything. I didn't want y'all to see me on the news because I mess around and have these other bloggers making fun of me, which I don't give a damn. If I got to go there, it's going to go there. But instead of him staying in his own lane, he decided to come over my lane because he thought he was going to teach me about parking in a, in a loading zone. But then again, I've been parking there for years. And don't nobody say nothing, not even a store manager, no manager. Here you have just a regular old guy 
who just works in the store and going to say something. You know, I went off on him. Like, why would you say something? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you let somebody tear your car up or whatever. Not saying that he told my car because he didn't. But if he would have went a little further, hit that gas, he would have ran right into my damn uh, car. So I got mad the guy went off because, you know, you have people try to overstep their boundaries and basically trying to act like they're going to assert the law on you. And I don't like that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's a time for everything. But you also have to be rational. Now, back to this story. The only thing this lady had to do instead of playing a hero was sit her hot ass down some damn well and let the cops do their damn job. And that's the whole point about it. Now you got her lawyer who's calling her a good Samaritan. You're not a damn good Samaritan. You're a good murderer. That's exactly what you are. It would be no difference if she was the one getting murdered and it was a black man killing her. I would say the same damn thing. If she would have hit somebody and drove off, she's not driving regulars, hitting nobody else. Even if she was, you still don't have a right to run her vehicle off the road. You still don't have a right to shoot her. You're not the police because they don't even really have the right, but they have somewhat, well, I guess, the jurisdiction, right? But what I'm trying to say is this. It wouldn't matter what color the person is. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. You see what I'm saying? But for the lawyer to call this person a good Samaritan, because that's why they play the devil's advocate, because they're paid to lie. Anyway, I'm going to read a snippet from this story, and I'm going to give my opinion. All of it. Surely, as we go, white woman, that's what it says, you can look at right there. Dubbed the female George Zimmerman. We already know the story about George Zimmerman. After chasing down and killing black man, black George man, excuse me, following a hit and run, just a damn hit and run, a man had lost his life. The 21-year-old claims, and that's a hard-ass 21. Wow, I thought she was about 49. Claims she was acting as a good Samaritan. How are you acting like a good Samaritan? When you follow this guy, you box him in, you get down and you draw down on him, you have a fight with the old man because the old man probably tell you to get the fuck out of his face like anybody else would and let the police do their job. And then you shoot the man, run back to your car, take off your bulletproof vest and put on a pink sweater. I'll tell you the damn truth. So why is you riding around with a bulletproof vest on the pink sweater? Oh, just in case shit happened. That's, that, that's what it is. That's, that's all it goes to show you. That's exactly what it means right there. Now, a Georgia woman charged with murder claims she was simply acting as a good Samaritan when she reportedly followed and killed a black senior citizen Tuesday. This man had been living all these damn years. He'd be on this earth damn near triple you done been on it. Your young ass come and take him out. The Atlanta Journal Constitution reports Hannah Payne. I thought they were going to say Hannah Montana. Hannah Payne, 21, but look at her a bit. A 49 in the face, and Charlemagne the God don't steal that one. Told police that she followed Keith Heron, 62, rest in peace. Uh, no, it's Kenneth, not Keith. My bad. I'm thinking about Keith Sweat down there. Anyway, Kenneth Harrington, 62 years old, and may he rest in peace. Lived all that time just for a young heifer to take him out after she claims to have witnessed him hit a car and flee the scene. So it's her job to throw on her cape. And here comes Wonder Woman ready to save the damn day. The Fayetteville resident said she called 911, followed the elderly man, and traded behind his pickup for about a mile. You follow behind this man for a whole mile, they'll do just stay on the phone with the police. But no, this is what happens when you want to play hero. But just like I told you at the beginning of the video, we don't need another hero. We got too many damn heroes out here. But when it's time to be a hero, well, don't nobody want to be a hero. The news station reports Payne not only tailed Heron, but boxed his vehicle in with her Jeep at an intersection in Clayton County. Just like I told you about, maybe that's why it triggered in my mind about the person trying to box me in and shit. And I'm about to get on that person's ass. They look like I was in the wrong city because if I was somewhere else, boy, if I was, I ain't gonna lie, if I was somewhere else in another state, it would have went down. It would have went down. They would have just said, y'all would have said, Trey, did, did, was that, you, what, that was that you at Home Depot? They have a guy look just like you on the news. They looking for him. Shit. They, 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 they try to damn play the Play Marshall, try to play Walker, Texas Ranger on you. How you gonna box me in like it's your job? And and I ain't even doing nothing. I ain't boxing nobody in. I am not being inconvenient to nobody. But it's funny and strange how certain people can pull up and want nobody to do shit to them. But you see my my ass come out to store in a nice car, or oh, you wanna play games with me. <laughs> the police department reports the woman who has a license to carry, who gives a fat, fat damn, grabbed her gun, got out of her vehicle, and confronted Harold. And Altercation ensued that led to the victim being shot. <laughs> you, say, you say it so simply. like It's just like it just rolled off your tongue. Like, who gives a damn? He was shot. Hell no, it just didn't happen like that. She got out talking shit to that man, threatening to shoot that man. That man was still trying to go, and she killed that man. He later died due to complications from his wound. You damn right. He didn't die from nothing else. 
he was all right all them years up until she pulled that gun out on him. So, of course, it, it, he died from the complications of the wound. All we are at liberty. Mm. All, we, all we are at liberty to discuss at this point is during the struggle, the weapon was discharged, said Major Anthony Thuman. But let me tell you, Thuman, the weapon just didn't discharge. Somebody had to pull that trigger. I don't care if you have a have what they call a hairy trigger, not a hairy, a hair trigger, which means like you could then blow on a piece of hair, drop on it, and it'll pull. Something still have to make that trigger give way. So for you to say the weapon was just discharged, who discharged the weapon? It's, see, it's it's not what you say. And I keep telling people that it's how you say what you say. Although the investigation is ongoing, the Atlanta officer expressed that there was enough evidence from the scuffle to suspect the woman committed murder. She followed the man for a damn mile. Y'all let this shit get away with George Zimmerman in Florida, but Florida is not Georgia. And no offense to my people in Florida, but trust me, if Zimmerman would have did that shit in Georgia or Louisiana, Texas, shit. They wouldn't have gave his ass no damn a slap on her wrist and said that uh, it, it was justifiable. Oh, hell no. What she thought she was going to do? Be an international superstar? That's why I'm telling you, you got to weigh your options. Now, look, even if Heron, the man that died, the elderly man that died, may he rest in peace. Even if this man would have hit that vehicle and hit another vehicle and hit another vehicle, you're not a police. You still can't get out and kill this man. Well, what if he, what if he, if, if he finna kill somebody else? I hate to say it, but that's their ass. As long as he ain't trying to kill you, that's what the police going to say. Unless you got that police badge, because you tell me if I'm wrong then. All right, I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Just say if somebody in a vehicle, and I'm not talking about him intentionally trying to roll, run over people on the outside on the sidewalk, but if somebody in a vehicle, he hit one vehicle, hit another vehicle, hit another vehicle, and you be in your vehicle, you're going to get out, your vehicle run across the street and kill him, that's still murder, man. That's still murder. You say, well, he, you trying to save somebody's life. They're not going to look at it like that because you're in a vehicle. You're not in no danger. Anyway, so the incident is fairly reminiscent of the high-profile 2012 case involving Trayvon Martin, may he rest in peace, and also George Zimmerman, who was stalked and basically gunned down like an animal. And George Zimmerman, they were telling George Zimmerman to back off, the 911 caller, back off, back off. He still pursued it. And it's strange how he still beat that damn case. Hmm. Hmm. I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to say it. Well, I'm going to go and say it. Fuck it. Maybe it's the connections his daddy got. Let me go and continue. Now, although Payne's exchange with 911 has not been publicly released at the time, Thuman, because the reason why I'm saying his name like that, because he got to be stupid the way he said this shit, talking about the weapon just discharged during the struggle. And then she trying to say that he killed himself. That's what she want to say, that he pulled the trigger. Who going to pull the trigger on them damn cell? If that's the case, he would just rent the damn, damn truck into a damn telephone pole or 18-wheeler. Come on. Anyway, now Thuman recounted a similar fact relevant to each case, stating that it is recommended that people stay in the car and let the officers responding handle the situation. Well, why didn't y'all tell Mr. Zimmerman that? And I understand it's two different states. You have Georgia, you have Florida. So even they told Zimmerman that, and he still was able to kill Trayvon and still get off. Hmm. I, I, I wonder how that I passed the judge and the prosecutors and all them, you know. Anyway, now the police official also expressed that the major, I mean, uh, the, that the minor damage, excuse me, Heron reported the calls to the hit and run vehicle was not significant. Really? You gonna you gonna bring up the damage of the vehicle? We talking about a man who lost his life? Look, I'm sad by the person getting their car here, but you can fix that car. I can get it fixed in a day or two. But guess what? You can't fix what happened to Mister Heron. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're the most high. You know, so it's going to it's gonna, it's gonna take a whole nother lifetime for us to get another heron. But guess what? You can get another car today. Payne's attorney, Matt Tucker, that's where it really get bad at, claims the victim also hit the defender's car and alleges his client was acting out of self-defense. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Matt Tucker, you mother. Anyway, how can your victim be acting in self-defense when... She followed this man for a mile. Number one, you trailing. Follow means trail. You trailing somebody for a whole mile. So it means you, you, you asking for whatever you get. Because the person didn't, number one, hit your vehicle. The person didn't threaten your life. So you just trying to play a good Samaritan. And true, we do need more good Samaritans in this world. But guess what? We don't need these kind. Because we need people who can assert judgment, righteousness, rightful judgment. You know what I'm saying? Know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk away, and know when to carry your ass on. You should have known. When the police said, let them have it, 
You could have just easily still follow that man and watch them arrest him. But no, you want to play hero. That's the whole point I'm trying to get at right there. But the attorney said the victim was acting in self-defense. How the hell that's self-defense? You in a vehicle. You're not fearing for your life. And if that's the case, why you go back to your car and take off your bad girl vest and then put on a pink sweater like you, a little damsel in distress? I didn't mean to make that, that, that rhyme. It just seems like in an unfortunate situation of a good Samaritan trying to stop a person on a hit and run, said Tucker, that mother. Payne claims that Heron became belligerent and violent when she asked him to return to the scene of the crime. So what? That's his right. He have a right to cuss your ass out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying what he did is, is, is right or wrong. It wouldn't matter if you was in Payne's shoes and the black man tried to stop her after she hit somebody's car and he told her, well, look, you need to return. True, in the righteous world. But if she didn't want to, guess what? Ain't shit he could have done. See what I'm saying? You see how that goes both ways? So, miss me with that. She had a ripped shirt. Who ripped it? She ripped it when she was trying to fight that old man. The old man wasn't going for that shit. She had scratch marks on her. It should be prints of his on hers or the gun. It probably was because she waving the gun out in the damn face. Who going to let somebody wave a damn gun in the face? They going to try to grab the damn gun. First of all, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Do this shit makes sense. She felt that she needed to pull that gun to defend herself and it went off. The gun went off because you pulled the damn gun out and pointed the gun at the man with the intentions to kill him. Period. Why else would you pull a gun out? You know what I'm saying? You pulling it out to play with somebody. Some of y'all do this while your ass ain't here today. And some of you done did this shit and wonder why you ass paralyzed, whatever. You pull it, you better use it. Other than that, leave it alone. So you pulling this gun out, got a bulletproof vest on in the middle of an intersection. It's not like you're behind a house, like, like you're in the woods. They can have cameras showing what happened. You feel what I'm saying? I guarantee you, if they show it, which they should, just, just blotch out the murder part, it will show she was the aggressor. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, he what he did was wrong. Because I don't want people to take the wrong interpretation from this video. But no matter if the man was white, black, pink, purple, whoever, nobody has a right to follow somebody. Especially you're not a police because a lot of times they be wrong. But here you is not even a police. You don't have no right to follow this man for a whole mile. Block, blocks him in. Get out with your gun. Start a scuffle with this man and then ultimately kill him. You cannot make that make sense. That, that, that do not make sense. That's just like if your ass, that's just like if you people, you go somewhere, and not saying that you all steal gas. We just going to say gas. Not saying that you all going to steal some gas, but just say if you take some gas or steal it, whatever, and somebody see you doing it, and they follow you down the highway, they pull in front of you, pull a gun out of you and kill you just because you stole some gas. Do that make any sense? And then we'll talk about self-defense. Anyway, now, we finna end it right here. Now, witnesses such as Nicole Jackson alluded to Payne as the aggressor. The onlooker reported to police immediately after the physical altercation that she watched as the woman approached Heron with a gun and ordered him to exit his truck. Like, who in the hell are you to order somebody to exit their truck? What he did was wrong, true enough, hitting somebody, but it's just a vehicle accident. You taking this shit like you the damn police. How you gonna be the police? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and shit, they be wrong sometimes too. But you don't even have no P or nothing on your damn badge. Or you don't have no badge or nothing. Just have a bad girl vest on. And you think that you have a power and a right to kill this person? Then the woman says, Nicole Jack said, all of a sudden you hear a pow. And she got on her phone immediately and was like, he pulled the trigger. You see that shit right there? Why would the man pull the trigger on him damn, well, on himself? And then she goes back, takes off her vest, change clothes, and put a pink sweater on. Ain't that some mess right there? So that goes to show you right there. She was trying to paint this image of a wholesome girl, but we ain't buying that crap. And like I said, this is no intended to be racist or whatnot because you can tell who watched the whole video. You can tell who don't. You know, more power to them or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is this. It wouldn't have matter if the person hit those vehicles, uh, Mr. Heron, since he was a black man. It wouldn't matter if he was white and the woman was black, was a black woman. If she would have followed this white man, I'd be saying the same thing. You don't have the right to do that, period. I don't know why people think they have a right to encroach on everybody else's life. Unless this man is threatening you, trying to harm your children, run y'all over. That's the only way that you can use force like that. You can't sit up here and watch somebody do something and trail them for a whole mile. Then the people tell you to back off, let them handle it. And you still pursue and Then you kill this person. And then your damn crazy lawyer want to say that you was acting out of self-defense. Wow. Anyway, you all let me know what you think about this. If you like the video, 
please push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the, to the channel and definitely share this video with your family and friends. Till next time, you all stay blessed and stay vigilant, stay woke because it just goes to show you. Like the show that come on TV. I don't know if it come on no more. A thousand ways to die. It's always there. We face with that every single day. Every day we step out of this house, we don't know what may just might happen. Now, I'm not in agreement with of him hitting a vehicle, doing a hit and run, but I'm also not in agreement of somebody tracking somebody down and killing them. It wouldn't matter if she was a police. If the guy's not causing no immediate threat to nobody, it was just a wreck. Why kill the man? Come on now. You can fix that, but you can't bring back Mr. Harry. I'm out.